that you are God. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, to God be the glory. Yes. And the honor. Well, we praise and magnify the God of our salvation. And we're going to ask our Agape Love Church and alumni, all that are home listening. Amen. Those who are with us on today, family and friends, we welcome you. Amen. And let's go right to the throne of grace. So almighty and eternal God, bless on your precious people. Strengthen and keep them. By the power of your spirit, let your will be done in our life in every single area. God, as we lift your name up on high, we pray strength come, peace come, healing come, deliverance come, your divine favor. No, Lord God, we pray prosperity come, every need met, every bill paid. God, that your people are able to do all that they need to do, yes. Lord God, to keep on living. Yes, amen. Living, amen, the abundant life that you yes. promised every one of us. Yes. To God be the glory. Be the now, glory. we bind forces of hell and come against every spirit that's not of you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We cancel the assignments of devil, sick, of sickness and death and uh, confusion in the land. We pray right now, Lord God, your people will be restored, yes, made whole and healed built up and strengthened yes, by the power of your word and by the power of the Holy Ghost. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Now, Lord, think through my thoughts and speak through my mouth. My God and my Redeemer, yes, my Lord and my Savior, yes, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be yes, acceptable in, in your sight, yes, Lord. my Lord. And let the ears of your people be blessed to yes, receive Lord. this word. And let the church arise. The church arise. Let church, the church arise. Amen. Arise, church. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Because it's time now. Amen. It's time yes. like never before. Yes. Well, you know, uh, there's a couple of things that, that I want to say uh, even before I begin this word. In, in 2015, I was recording an album called Launch Out. And in the midst of recording or writing, not recording, but writing uh, the songs for the album, the Lord gave me a rise church or the lion, a lion has roared. And it's an exhortation to the church to rise up. And we'll play it at the end of the message today. But I want to say this. The Lord spoke to me. He said, this is the time. He said, I really want you to encourage the church like never before to stand boldly, to preach boldly, yes. to witness boldly to everything. He said, because now. The enemy is going to come with an attack that's going to try to drive the church back only in four walls and not reaching people who are hurting, who are wounded, who have been broken. And we've got to stand like never before. Amen. And so it's important that we arise and do yes. all that God has called us to do. I want you to go with me to the word of God. We're going to the book of Amos. Amen. Amos, the third chapter. And, you know, Amos is what we call one of the minor prophets. Amen? Amen. Amos is one of the minor, minor prophets because uh, not that their prophecy wasn't as great as the major prophets. It just was a shorter uh, discourse. Amen? Prophetic discourse. Amen. And so we're going to go there and start with me. When you're there in the third chapter, in the sixth verse. All right. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people be not afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord have not done it? But surely the Lord God will do nothing but reveal first. He's got to do what? Reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. For the lion has roared. Who will not but fear? The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can? but prophesy. Well, what is that telling us? First of all, when we look at a trumpet, and we know the shofar, amen, is blown in the, the season of Rosh Hashanah, as it is, amen, and has been since the 18th of September, amen. And so we know that every time Israel was about to make a move or to have a feast, uh, the shofar would be, uh, would be blown on certain uh, feasts of the Lord, amen, and they would blow they would blow it, and like I heard just another Bible teacher say the other day, yeah. as I did my study, they can blow it a hundred times yeah. in one day. Yeah. So, the trumpet is a sign that God is up to something. Yeah. Somebody say God is up to something. God is up to Amen. something. Amen. And, and so not only is it a sign 
that something is about to happen. God is up to something. Yes. And the reason why I say God is up to something, uh -huh. because I, as, I don't believe nothing can happen mm -hmm. unless it comes by the Lord's eyes. And so yes. whatever you're going through, know that God, amen, is watching. He's watching yes. everything mm -hmm. that's happening to you or it's about to happen, or it's going to try to happen to you, right. God is always going to look after his people. Amen. And so it says, surely the Lord will do nothing, mm -hmm. but he reveals his servant, his secrets. Uh -huh. Amen. He reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Yes. And so then the voice of the prophet is another way that we know that God is moving in our behalf because a prophet will speak the mind of God. Amen. 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 And then it says, the lion... Look what it says. The lion have roared. Who will not fear? You know, when a, a lion roars, it's, you know, it's nothing mm -hmm. to be played with. Yeah. Because when they, they are ferocious beasts, mm -hmm. and when God, and when we think about how the Lord came the first time as a lamb, but guess what? His second coming, he's not coming back as a lamb, no, is he? Not. He's coming back as the lion the of the amen, which king. is the king of beasts. But he's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Yeah. And amen. He's the lion of the tribe of who? Judah. Judah. Amen. So the lion have roared, who will not but fear? The Lord has spoken, and who can but prophesy? So a roaring lion is a sign that something Amen. It's about to happen. It is a warning. It was a warning to Israel. Amen. That the lion is coming. In Isaiah 60, let's go over there. And 1 through 5. Amen. This is an admonition, an exhortation to the church or to Israel. But I believe, amen, that we, since we've been engrafted in, amen, through our faith in, in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are heirs and joint heirs. Amen. Look what it says here. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Mm -hmm. Amen. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Well, what's going on right now? Mm -hmm. The land is covered with gross darkness. Mm -hmm. And whenever there's a lot of darkness, guess what? Mm -hmm. The Lord will bring forth and reveal his light. Yeah. Remember, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Mm -hmm. So right now, the world is facing much darkness. Mm -hmm. now, not just because of the COVID-19. Uh, the uh, We know that that's causing a lot of darkness in the land. A lot of people have lost loved ones. Amen. A lot of people are still fighting. Amen. Uh, for their life. There are a lot of people are still going through financial distress. Right. Gross darkness. There's a lot of social unrest. Okay. Amen. Uh, people are burning down buildings. There's a lot of things that are that's very that can be extremely dark in our culture right now. Mm -hmm. And when I say extremely dark, I'm talking about the darkness of wickedness and the darkness of evil. Mm -hmm. But yet the Lord, amen, admonishes Israel and says, Arise, shine. For my light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Amen. And the third, the third verse said, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Mm -hmm. Amen. So lift up thine eyes round and about and see. Yes. All they gather themselves together, they shall come to thee. Thy son shall come from afar, mm -hmm. and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see, flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because of the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, mm -hmm. and the forces of the Gentile, Gentile shall come unto thee. That was God's admonition and prop, uh, uh, prophetic word to Israel that it, it, no matter what they were going through, mm -hmm. amen, to arise and shine. Yeah. And then we know in Isaiah 61, we see that he's talking about, amen, the, the ministry of Christ, Yeshua HaMessiah, yeah. the Messiah was going to be coming. Yeah. And when the Messiah comes, he would bring forth light. Is that right? Amen. Because he is what? The light of the world. Is the that right? Amen. He is the light of the world. So, yeah. amen. Those who are listening, you might say, well, Dr. Dixon, I'm in a lot of darkness right now. Uh, things are happening in my home, in my family. But I want you to know. To rise and shine. Yeah. Amen. Let the glory of God, let the light of Christ that's in you yeah. shine forth. Because, amen, God has a plan mm -hmm. to not only bring us up, bring us out, bring us through this situation that we're yes. going through. Yes. Amen? Amen. And then it says in Mark, so go with me to the New Testament. Amen. amen. And, and, and I want us to understand, uh, when God gave me uh, the song about a lion has roared, 
I wrote that back in 2015. And, and, he, and he said, this, this song is not for this season, but I want you to do it now because you're going into the right. recording studio. Uh -huh. He said, but you will know mm. when I want you to present this song. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, that launch out album, it's on YouTube. Uh, but this particular song is on that album. Yeah. And I felt like it didn't fit uh, into the, uh, the song that I had mm -hmm. recorded. But God said, you'll know mm -hmm. when it's supposed to be sung. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'll play it later on. But God was letting me know that the church, when you hear the song, you'll see what I'm saying, mm -hmm. that the church was going to move into a season yeah. and move into a time where we're going to have to get up mm -hmm. and rise up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, not just from our, our ease, because I don't think nobody is at ease anymore now. Amen. Even though we may be at home, and there's not a lot of people, mm -hmm. amen, uh, going to their churches today. There's not a lot of people going to their jobs today. And and there and a lot of different activities that we used to do, yes. they may not be doing that much anymore. Mm -hmm. But still, uh -huh. God has put a mandate on the church to rise up. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's go to the book of Mark, the 16th chapter. And, we, and we're and we going to see, and it's reminding me of how when Christ was risen, that God had a plan. He had already told them, he had already told his disciples, but they forgot. Mm -hmm. and, and church, I just want to say, we're living at a time you cannot forget. Yeah. Amen. Don't, don't forget what God has already done and what he's still doing and what he's yet to do. Yeah. And so in Mark 16, I'm going to start at the very first verse. It said, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him, talking about the body of Christ. And very early in the morning of the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was already rolled away. Mm -hmm. The stone from the door of the sepulcher. Hallelujah. Amen. For it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were afraid. And he said unto them, Be not afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. Yes. Yeah. He's not here. Mm -hmm. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee, and there ye shall see him as he said unto you. Look what he's, the angel said, as he said unto you. Mm -hmm. And so many times when God has spoken something to us, we forget, amen, and especially during days of sorrow or challenges, we forget God's promises. Mm -hmm. We forget God's word, but amen. He said he already told you this as he's spoken unto you that he would rise again. Hallelujah. After three days. Now listen, um, that eighth verse said, and they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Yes. Now Jesus was risen, amen, early the first day of the week. He appeared first to Mary Magdalene, one of whom he cast out seven devils. And she told them that what had been, that he, you know, well, she went and told them that had been with him mm -hmm. as they mourned and wept. So mm -hmm. she told, he's, she's talking to the disciples now. Yeah. And she's reminding them, telling her, telling them of what she went through, what she experienced. Mm -hmm. They're not believing. And unless you believe God, somebody mm -hmm. say without faith, without faith, it's hard to believe God. And you won't do nothing without faith. Faith yeah. is voice activated. Mm -hmm. Faith will make you get up, stand mm -hmm. up, preach up, mm -hmm. teach up, witness, mm -hmm. amen, praise up. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't, you know what? If you don't have faith to believe that you can, mm -hmm. you won't. Even if you really mm -hmm. have the ability. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so she told them, and they that went had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her. But look what it said. They believed not. My Lord. And because they didn't believe, they didn't, at first they didn't make a move. But afterwards, look at the, amen. But after they went on and they, you know, other people had to remind them. Jesus had to upbraid them. He had to come in their midst and remind them. And so if you don't remember or if you don't, amen, believe what God says, you'll stay stagnant. Sometimes people just stay 
amen, in a rut. They don't have to be in a rut. Sometimes people just stay, uh, stay uh, in, in a complacency that they don't have to be. Because amen. God is a forward-moving God. Amen. God will strengthen you and lift you and yeah. encourage you and build you. And you don't just have to, amen, you, take nothing, lay it down. But you can rise up. Amen. Well, after that, let's go on. We're going to go, we're going to drop down to the uh, 13th verse. And it said, and they went and they told it unto the residue. Neither believed them, neither, <laughs> they didn't believe them either. But afterward, he appeared unto the leaven as they sat at meat, upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Wow. Arise, church, right. because we've been seated together with Christ. But they didn't want to believe because they were still in unbelief. Mm -hmm. After all the miracles, after all the things that God had done, Christ had done, amen, they still were in unbelief. But let's yeah. go on. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world. See, you won't get up until you believe. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But he said, go ye into all the world mm -hmm. and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name mm -hmm. shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand hand of God. Mm. Amen. And guess what happened? They went forth. They had to rise up, didn't they? Yes, Lord. Arise, church. We've Arise. been given the mandate. Yes. Hey, look, look what it said. And they went forth and they preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word. Yes. With signs following. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. For he is risen. Well, in Luke, amen, uh, it, it's so important that we understand that God wants us to believe what he said. Mm -hmm. But listen to what it says here at the, at, well, let's go to Luke 24. Everybody there? Say, I'm there. You're there. 24. Amen. Luke 24. Hallelujah. And this is Luke's, amen. This is from the book of Luke explaining plainly again mm -hmm. why it's so important for them to have to have believed. And it came to pass, look at the fourth verse, mm -hmm. as they were much perplexed about their vow. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? Look what it said. Why seek ye the living among the dead? Amen. That's Luke 24, for those who just came in. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So the angels have to remind them again, mm -hmm. why are you seeking the living? Amen. Amen. Among the dead. Amen. Because, again, he had risen. Is that right? Amen. And so the sixth verse said, he's not here. Mm -hmm. He's not here. Yeah. He, but he is risen. Mm -hmm. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee? So Luke is giving a little bit more information, mm -hmm. instruction, and he said the Son of Man must be delivered mm -hmm. unto the hands of sinful men mm -hmm. and be crucified and the third day rise mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And they remembered his words. Mm -hmm. So Mark told it his way. Mm -hmm. Luke saw it in his perspective and he gave them a little bit more information. Yeah. And we have now the Old Covenant and the New Testament, yeah. so we should not doubt that he's risen. Amen. And I don't believe Amen. Anyone listening that is a Christian, you know where your you know where your Lord and Savior is. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father on high. But guess what? He wants you to understand right. that on the cross of Christ, mm -hmm. amen, amen, you were risen with him amen. as well. So let's go to Acts the 17th chapter, and then we're going to close in Ephesians. Acts 17, 1 through 4 says, Now when they had passed through Amphilipolis mm -hmm. and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews? 17. Amen. That's Acts 17, 1 through 4. Amen. I'm going to wait for you to get it. Y'all got it? All right. I'm sorry, y'all. I know I go a little bit fast. Hallelujah. 
So look what it said here. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where it was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. And three seven days he reasoned them with them out of the scriptures, opening, amen, expounding the word of God, and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen, there it is, and what? Risen again from the dead. And that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is the Messiah. He is Yeshua HaMessiah. He is the Christ. And so Paul was, because again, they basically wanted just to stay up under the old covenant. And the Lord, amen, now that the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ had already been came to pass, it was time for them to understand what the Lord indeed was saying to the church and to Israel. Yeah. So Paul, the way, and we know, I don't want to go into all of that that Paul, that Paul did, but we know that Paul brought forth the gospel, amen. He called his gospel his gospel, mm -hmm. but it was basically the revelation, knowledge, and insight that Jesus Christ is indeed the Messiah and the Christ of God. Yeah. And so he said, whom I preach, whom I preach unto you is Christ or is the Messiah. Uh -huh. And look at that fourth verse. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude and of the chief women, not a few. And so by the preaching of the gospel, many of the Jews believed on Christ that he had indeed died and yes. was buried and was resurrected. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and, and so uh, the apostle Paul Amen. Was the determiner to make sure that the gospel of Jesus Christ was going to be expounded, mm -hmm. regardless. And we know that Paul endured a lot of persecution yes. because of the gospel. Yes, he did. And you may also be <laughs> enduring some things because of the gospel. Right. You may be put out of people's company because you're you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people don't mind being with you for a while, but when you start witnessing, mm -hmm. then that's many times when they don't want to hear you no more. But you, amen, but church arise and be bold. Amen. For the Lord thy God is what? With, with thee. thee. Amen. amen. And so look what it said. Again, I'm going to read that fourth verse again. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. And so many people accepted Christ, their Messiah, because of the preaching of the gospel. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's go to Ephesians. Amen. Ephesians, the second chapter. And again, uh, and Paul wrote, of course, to Ephesus. And there were many Jews in Ephesus as well. And there were some that were being converted, and as well as Gentiles that the Apostle Paul was ministering to. And the Lord gave him this revelation. Now, many times when God gives us a revelation and insight, uh, a lot of people question, well, how do I know that that's true? But revelation knowledge is given to those to not only hear but receive because it comes to you first. And we know that Paul said he was what? He spent some time alone he, at the Galatian church. Uh, he told them about how he spent this time. And during that time that Paul spent that time alone with, uh, with Jesus, Remember, Paul was one, he said he was born like out, of, out of season as far as the disciples were concerned because he was not alone with the 12. But here, God deals with Paul in a very unique way because the 12 all knew who Christ was. And we know, of course, what happened with Judas. Of course, he was, um, well, we know Judas betrayed the Lord. Is that right? So the 11 still knew who Christ was. But the revelation of a deeper understanding of who Christ was, was given to the Apostle Paul. And so he says something, and even Peter talked about how Paul's preaching was so deep. He said <laughs> if some of his word was hard to, to understand, and that's Apostle Peter, the premier preacher of the church. Mm -hmm. And yet, even Peter says some of the revelation that God had given Paul was so awesome that many people were having a difficult time understanding it. I believe Peter understood, but he, because of course Peter had his revelation who Christ 
personally. Remember, Peter was the first one who had the revelation, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. But here we see that, amen, he's about to bring forth a revelation for the church, and it's awesome. So let's take a look, and then we're going to listen to that song. Ephesians 2, 5 through 10, if you with me there. All right, go with me there. And it says, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ, and by grace you are saved. And he has what? Raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So guess what? When, you, when Christ died on that cross, amen, he knew you were coming. You were raised up too. So arise, church. Because we've been raised up. Look what it said. He has made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He's raised us up together. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. And so you, it's not of your own ability. Grace is God's unmerited favor. And you're saved by grace. Amen. You are, for by grace are you saved through faith. By grace are you saved through faith. It's nothing that you can do. It's not of works of, of any righteousness. Things that, as a matter of fact, Isaiah said, our righteousness is what? Filthy rags. Not of works, as any man should boast, for we are his workmanship. Yeah. Amen. God made you, created you. He knows your proclivities. Yeah. He knows your uprising, your down cities, your going in, your coming out. Yeah. He knows the way that you take. Mm -hmm. He knows what gifts he had placed in you. Mm -hmm. Amen. He knows your personality type. He said he even knows your thoughts are far off. Amen. So we are already seated with Christ. And so our final scripture, Colossians 3 and 1. He says, if you then be risen, so I'm going to wait for you to get there. I'm sorry. I should have told you. Amen. Amen. Colossians 3 and 1. That's our closing scripture today. Look what it says. If ye then be risen. And we know, because Paul that wrote the book of Ephesians, he's frightened to the Colossian people. And he just wrote, amen, he, we've been raised up together with Christ. But look what he says to the Colossian, the church at Colossian. He said, if ye then be risen. With Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sit on the right hand of God. And so what do we have to do? First of all, we are to continue a strong prayer life because he said on this wise, when we pray, mm -hmm. our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is, what? In heaven. So we pray the will of God be done on earth as it where is in heaven. Where two or three are touching and agreeing on earth, God said, I'll be in the midst. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. And so our prayers, even though they're heavenward, amen, we're standing in the gap for what's going on. Like we're mm -hmm. praying for the election. We're praying for uh, this coronavirus to have a shelf life that it'll finally mm -hmm. uh, die and we, we, we can stop wearing masks and start fellowshipping again, but God wants to do something mm -hmm. for this nation. Yeah. He wants to do something for the world. Mm -hmm. And right now the world is crying out for a vaccine, but we, as God's people, need to understand, they need to understand that they need to cry out to the Savior mm -hmm. because he's a healer. Is that right? Yeah. Amen. So if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Let your voice be heard. So stand up, be bold, Amen. Teach and reach. And most of all, arise, church. So come on. Uh, my daughter, Sarah, is going to play this for you. Amen. And then we'll do the benediction. To God be the glory. I want you to listen to the words. It's not so much about the melody, but it's the words. Amen. Arise, church. But first he reveals his secrets unto his bride.
2015, I said, Lord, you know, it really doesn't fit in with the kind of song really I was doing at that time. But God said, his coming is near. Nearer than when we, when we first believed. Is that right? We're seeing the signs of his coming. So church, arise! And let's get ready for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. So almighty and eternal God, we give you praise. We glorify you. Help us to do what we need to arise. You told us, Lord God, that in the days that, that you are coming soon and we would recognize the signs of your coming. Yes. We, may know the, we may not know the day nor the hour. You said that even the angels don't know, only your Father which is heaven. Yes. So I pray, Lord God Almighty, that the churches and the ecclesia, the churches all over the world, that, Lord, that we will hear and that our hearts will be in tune to hear your voice. And that we will continue to do the mandate where you said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You told us, Lord God, to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You told us, Lord God, if we pick up any deadly things, it will not harm us. And so, and Lord God, so we ask you right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, anoint us. Prepare us even with a fresh oil, yes. even with a fresh move of your spirit. Yes. Let it be a building in the A building up and not a tearing down. Yes, Lord. Oh God, help us. Yes. Amen. And we will bring glory and honor to your righteous name. Thank you. And so God, may we bless you. And until we meet again and our family and friends. You have a God blessed day. And remember, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Be blessed. Amen.